fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you do it is the question, and here's one the have have happy people have to say. Yep, take Mickey Mantle, born in Oklahoma. Star with the New York Yankees. From out west, where a man's a man. And what a man is Mantle. Say, Mickey's been eating Wheaties for years. Now listen, here's another champion with plenty of zing in his swing. Zing! That's a service ace for champion Pancho Gonzalez, a native Californian. He hits them hard, he makes them swish, and in the morning enjoys his dish of Wheaties. Sure, lip smack and taste tickling, rib sticking good. And there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do, 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 and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll still The little mission was supported by the people in San Jose. Because of their generosity, the Padre was able to give food, clothing, and medicine to the Indians in the valley and the pioneers who struck hard luck in the hills. The mission bells carried the word that any deserving human might find help within the mission walls. And then one day, the bells went silent. The Lone Ranger and Toto approaching San Jose learned that the mission bells had not sounded for nearly two years. During that time, there had been a flood and then a drought. There was hunger and poverty in the hills and valleys surrounding the town. Without help, Toto, many Indians and pioneers will die before the winter ends. Is that right? I wonder why the mission is no longer able to help. Well, maybe people in town no longer help mission. Oh, but why? Maybe in town we learn. Yes, I intend to. I'll call on the padre. You wear mats, Kimasami? No, the San Jose padre doesn't know us. I'll dress like a prospector and disguise my face. Come on, Come on scout! After disguising himself as a prospector... The Lone Ranger left Toto in a camp and went into town alone. He went directly to the mission and rode into the patio where the Padre was talking to the sheriff. He dismounted and greeted the Padre. Hello, Padre. Where's there, Senor? Then the Padre said... Our Sheriff, Senor. His name is Dan Hawkins. I'm glad to know you, Sheriff. I didn't get your name, stranger. Sheriff, here at the mission, we do not ask the name of the stranger who comes to visit. Uh, Sorry, Padre, I forgot that. I was overly curious about this man. He talks a lot different than he looks. People say that they haven't heard your bells for nearly two years, Padre. I cannot ring the bells when I have no help for the ones in need. The syndicate's to blame for that. The syndicate? Yeah. That's the outfit that swindled Marty Jessup out of his gold mine. The ordinary eastern money grabbers. When Marty owned the Esmeralda mine, he gave a big chunk of his profits to this mission. And so did all the men who worked for him. Then along came the syndicate. They stole the mine from Marty. They fired his men, brought in Easterners to take their places. Uh, Senor, I was about to visit Senor Jessup when the sheriff came. I am already late. I must go, but I return soon. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, Padre. You know, that's a uh, fine horse you ride, mister. 
Looks like he could cover lots of ground. He has. Traveled a lot, huh? Quite a bit. You ever hear of a man called the Midnight Rider? I've seen reward notices. He's wanted for armed robbery, isn't he? Yep. He's a man about your size, maybe a little younger. That's interesting. Uh-huh. That's a mighty fancy gear your horse is wearing. Is the trimming solid silver? Yes. <clears throat> are, uh, are you telling the name of your horse? I call him Silver. Uh, silver, huh? <laughs> you think I might be the midnight rider? I know you're not. I have other ideas as to who you are. Oh? Mr. I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you something I don't tell to many people. I know the name of the Midnight Rider. He's Bob Jessup. Any relation to the man who lost the Esmeralda mine? Yep. Bob's the son of Marty Jessup. Sheriff, uh, why are you confiding in me? Well, you look like a gent who'd be interested in what I have to say. I'll uh, tell you why I'm sure Bob is the Midnight Rider. I'd like to hear that. He and my daughter were in my office... I'll never forget the look on Bob's face. Jim Curry stole Dad's gold mine. That's what it amounts to. He stole it and the law helped him. There's nothing you can do about it, Bob. Yes, there is, Mary. If a crook gets rich while an honest man goes broke, then I'll turn crook. Bob left my office and left town. That was the last I saw him. Uh, Sheriff, what about the midnight rider? He first appeared about two weeks after Bob left town. He went to Curry's house at midnight, stole some money, and slapped Curry around. A few weeks later, he stuck up the mine paymaster. After that, he made off with mining company cash from the express office. Did he always appear at midnight? No. He was called the midnight rider because of the first time he appeared. And because of his black horse and cape and mask... Has anyone heard from Bob since he left San Jose? Every so often, his parents get a letter with cash in it. But they don't know where to reach him. You said the Midnight Rider dropped out of sight about a year ago. Yes. But during that year, the people he robbed have been receiving money from him. He's paid back just about all he stole. Bob Jessup will be coming here for the first time. How do you know? His mother is dying. Bob will know about it. He has ways of keeping track of what goes on around town. He'll know his mother's dying, and he'll come here. Uh, doggone, mister, I'd rather turn in my badge and arrest the boy. The Lone Ranger and Tonto moved their camp to the top of a hill not far from town. From there, they could see for miles in all directions. They took turns watching, and on the second day, Tonto sighted a solitary figure on a black horse. Binoculars revealed the fact that he answered the description of Bob Jessup. The Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted and rode to meet the traveler. Montilla! Scout! Bob Jessup saw the masked man and the Indian approach. He drew rein and waited with one hand on his gun. Oh, 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 enough. You aiming to talk to me? Yes, Jessup. Please dismount. How do you know who I am? The sheriff described you. He's expecting you. Who are you? If I wanted to be known, I wouldn't wear a mask. Now dismount. I'll do as you say, mister, because I'm in no mood to fight or argue. My cash is in my right-hand pocket. If that's what you're after, take it and let me go. I'm in a hurry. I don't want your cash. See, what's in the saddlebags, Tonto? No. Me look. Easy, feller. Stay away from those saddlebags or there'll be gunplay. Hold it. Oh, you... Don't finish your draw. I thought I was fast with a gun. Leave it in the holster and we'll have no trouble. I'm on your side, Jessup. You're on my side? Yes. The sheriff knows you're the midnight rider. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. See what Tonto has found in your saddlebags? Yeah, black mask, black cape. That stuff, I... I, uh, I want your confidence. Huh? I think the sheriff suspected who I am when he found out my horse is named Silver. Silver, the mask. Does a silver bullet mean anything to you? Here. You... Great Scott, the Lone Ranger. The sheriff's daughter is still waiting for you. Mary. But then... Your father's hoping you'll get home in time. Then it... It's true about Ma? Yes, I think it is. Mister, I pay back every dime I stole. I'm square with everyone. But not with the law. But I... You said you were in a hurry to get home. Go ahead. All right. 
Easy. Get it. Kibasabe. Yes. Yeah. You think him be arrested when him get to town? I don't know what the sheriff will do, Tonto. We'll watch closely and find out. You go into town and keep an eye on development. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right, each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. After the conference on the trail, the Lone Ranger sent Bob Jessup on his way, but kept the mask and cape that would identify the young man as the mysterious midnight rider wanted by the law. It was night and the moon was bright when Jessup guided his tired horse past the mission in San Jose. He heard a girl call his name. Bob! Oh, Bob! Oh, who the hell Mary, the daughter of the sheriff and the girl Bob Jessup loved, ran up to meet him. Mary! Bob, you did come back. Oh, gosh, Mary, it's been a long time since I saw you. What's the latest word about my mother? There's been no change since the last note I sent you, Bob. She's alive, but the doctor doesn't expect her to live. I'm glad I got here while she's still alive. But, Bob, wait. I must tell you, my father's waiting for you. And he's sure you're the midnight rider. I've paid back everything I stole. That won't help. The law may have trouble getting real proof against me. Curry will have men swear that you're the one who robbed them. He's terribly vindictive. He's never forgotten that the midnight rider slapped his face. I wish I'd slapped it harder. Here comes Dad. It's too late for me to try to run. He's seen us talking. Well, look who's here. I've been expecting you, Jessup. Dad, please. How I... are you, Sheriff? I had a hunch I'd see you if I kept watching on Mary. I, uh... It, has uh, Mary told you about my suspicions? Yes. What are you going to do, Sheriff? Lock me up? Bob, I'm willing to meet you halfway on a gentleman's agreement. What does that mean? The doc says your mother has only a day or so left in... It would be a shame if uh, if she had to, to die, knowing her son was in jail. I, uh, <clears throat> I'll let you go home and see her if you'll give me your word of honor that you'll come into my office when uh, when she's gone and give yourself up. When, when Ma's gone. Or at the latest by noon on Thursday. She's waiting for you, Bob. She's waiting and hoping and praying to see you. I'll go right away. Soon after leaving Mary and the sheriff, Bob was at the bedside of his mother while his father waited with the doctor in another room. Holding the white-haired woman's thin hand, Bob told of his discovery of gold some distance north of San Jose. Bob, is that the truth? Have you really found gold? Yes, Mom. Every word I've told you is the truth. Oh, son, I... I'm so relieved. I was afraid the money you've been sending us might... might not be honest money. It's honest money, Mom. Dad can start all over again with a new claim, and he can send money to the Padre. And the mission bell will ring again. Oh, that makes me happy, son. My back now, Mom. Close your eyes and rest. You're tired.
When Mrs. Jessup fell asleep with a smile on her face, Bob left the room on tiptoe and signaled for the doctor to go in. In 15 minutes, the doctor returned to the sitting room where Bob and his father were waiting. Doc, how is she? I can't account for it. Perhaps the visit from her son has helped. Your wife is much improved. She's sleeping normally. You, you mean to say, is there a chance? Bob, I think your mother's going to get well. At first, Bob couldn't believe the incredible news. He questioned the doctor at length, then hurried to the sheriff's home where he found the lawman and Mary. Oh, Jesse, Mary. I thought you were with your mother. Sheriff, Mary. Ma's not going to die. What? She's going to get well. What? You... Bob! But I... I wonder... I wonder how she'll take it when you give yourself up to after tomorrow. Uh, Sheriff, I forgot all about that. That's going to be tough, son. Ma's biggest worry was that I'd send home stolen money. It'll kill her if I'm jailed as a thief. You'll have the time I promise you, Bob. But I'll... I'll have to jail you at noon on Thursday. Toto had followed the Lone Ranger's instructions and kept a close watch on events in town. He had found a vantage point near a window in the sheriff's house and heard enough to grasp the situation. When he left town and reported to the Lone Ranger in camp, the masked man agreed that Mrs. Jessup would never survive the shock of having her son jailed. It means a woman's life, Toto. What we do, Kimasabi. You see what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we may call on the sheriff. It was late the following night when the Lone Ranger quietly entered the sheriff's home, went to the bedroom and lighted a lamp. The lawman wakened, saw the masked man. At first he was startled. Then a slow grin spread over his face. Mister, I, I have a hunch I'd recognize your voice. We've met before, Sheriff. Yep, that's right. But you weren't wearing a mask. And you were dressed different. At that time, you told me about a problem. I came to discuss it further. It sure is a problem. It makes me hate my job as lawman. The Sheriff confided in the Lone Ranger telling how he had failed in an effort to persuade Curry to drop the charges against Bob Jessup. It remains to be proved that Jessup is the Midnight Rider. A lot may happen between now and tomorrow noon. Noon of the following day found Jim Curry and a number of other men in the office of the sheriff. Mary, too, was present. Curry looked at his watch. Well, it's 12 well, o'clock. Curry, here he comes, right on time. Hey, how are you? Sir? Well, you did show up, Jessup. I didn't think you'd have the nerve. I showed up all right, Curry. I dare say you've seen these men through the eye holes of a mask. How about it, gentlemen? Does this look like the Midnight Riders? Yes, sure it does. That's it. All right, Sheriff, we've identified him. Jessup, don't you try to deny your guilt. I'm not denying or admitting anything. You offered a reward, Curry. Did you bring the money with you? I did. I have it right here in my pocket. Well, Curry, you said you'd pay the reward money when Bob Jessup was in custody. That's right. I'm in custody. So put the cash on the sheriff's desk. All right, there it is. And you're welcome to it, Sheriff. Well, it's not my money. I told Bob he could have the reward if he'd give himself up. So that's it. Yes, Curry, that's it. And the money is going to the Padre at the mission. When he gets it, he'll ring the bells that my ma hopes to hear once more. <laughs> Oh, Bob. There's just one thing I'd like to point out to you, Mr. Curry. Yeah, what's that? You agreed to pay the reward for the capture of Bob Jesse. Because he's the Midnight Rider. That remains to be proved. We've identified him. We'll do the same in court. You might be wrong. Dad, he's mad. It was the Lone Ranger who stood in the doorway. But instead of his familiar regalia, he wore the black cape and the mask that Curry and his associates had seen on the Midnight Rider. There's the Midnight Rider. That's the man. Yes, but, but he... We were all wrong, Curry. He must be the man who robbed us. He's the same size as Jesse. What do you want here, mister? Curry has been generous in his offer of a reward. I'll take the money. No, no. Curry, are you going to try to stop me? <laughs> I doubt it. I advise all of you to stand right where you are for several minutes after I leave. Now get him, Sheriff. Do something. I demand that man's arrest. Bring him back here. Do your duty, Sheriff. I'll see what I can do. Oh, Dad, be careful. Uh, there he goes. He got away. It's a trick. That's what it is. It's some kind of a trick to clear Bob Jesse. What I... about you other gents? 
You still insist that Jessup is the midnight rider? Well, I... I reckon it... Ah, uh, Jessup, I apologize. And so do I, Jessup. I sure hope you don't bear hard feelings. I guess... You're sir. admitting your mistake, like gentlemen. Well, Curry, you seem to be standing alone. My money was It stolen. wasn't your money. You'd already paid it over for the capture of Bob Jessup, as you agreed. Now, if you've no further business, please get out of my office. I want to talk to Jessup alone. Come on, Curry. But I... Ted Rabbit... There's something mighty curious. Come on, Curry, before you make a bigger fool. Oh, Bob. Bob, you're in the clear. Sheriff, Curry was right about me being the Midnight Rider. That man who came here, he took my cape and mask. He's not the Midnight Rider at all. Bobby, don't argue with a good break when it's handed to you. You're in the clear. Go back to your folks. You and your pa have a gold mine to work. But that man took the reward money. He'll know what to do with it. Dad, yes? the mission bell. Open the door, Mary, so we can hear it better. Yeah? All right. That's what my ma wants to hear, the mission bell. It must mean the Padre has received some cash. Wouldn't you say so? Yes, but... Offhand, I'd say the cash was just handed to him by an Indian who got it from the masked man who came here wearing your cape. I should have known, Sheriff. I should have known that cash would go to the right place when it was taken by the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.